Hello, I'm Carl, and this is ProCycles Tech Talk. Today we're going to talk about the basics of carburation jetting. We hear a lot of misunderstandings about it, a lot of people approaching it the wrong way. We're going to go over the basic, the fundamentals of what jetting is, what stages of jettings to look at, and how to make the corrections that might be necessary. First, we want to talk about the do's and don'ts of jetting. One thing you want to do when you want to adjust your jetting, you want to evaluate how the performance of your motorcycle with the carburation, make sure that motorcycle is warmed up completely. It's been running a minimum of 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, get everything warm. Then everything will be as it would be when you're running down the road. The jetting changes from when you first turn the choke on and it's starting up in the morning to when you're running midday. So make all your jetting evaluation and changes with the bike completely warmed up. Another thing we want to talk about is reading spark plugs to understand jetting. Reading spark plugs is a valuable information for race bikes, guys especially with the two-stroke race bikes, but it's kind of a lost art with street bikes. Today's gasolines have so many additives in it that really will give you a misconception of what the jetting is on the bike because you've seen the commercials. The, the gasoline has burn clean, anti-knock, all those things for fuel-injected vehicles doesn't work real well with motorcycle. It's always going to be a color that's misleading to understanding what the jetting issue is. So let's take a first look at what the jetting stages are. There's three stages of jetting on your carburation. There's idle, real low RPMs, there's mid-range, and then there's top end. Idle and real low RPMs is controlled by the fill mixture screw. And that means it's idle and low RPMs is just about the time you let out the clutch to get going. Once you're underway, you're in the mid-range and the needle is going to control everything in the mid-range. And until you're about three-quarters throttle, seven-eighths throttle, wide open throttle, that's when the main jet comes into play. Now, each one of these jetting segments only controls that. We hear back from someone, the bike wasn't idling right, so I raised the main jet, or I couldn't get a top end was falling on his face, so I richened up the air fuel mixture screw, or I changed my pilot jet to get more top end performance doesn't work that way. Each jetting category has something that controls the jetting and the function of that RPM range, and that's the only detail you should change. So if you're having a problem, you don't feel there's enough top end, that's a main jet consideration. If it doesn't idle good, it's, it doesn't want to warm up quickly, that's an air-fuel mixture. That's going to be the adjustment. Everybody rides in the mid-range, and we hardly know anybody that rides at wide open throttle or anybody that rides at idle. Everyone's in the mid-range, and that's the lion's share of performance. That's the key piece to the jetting that you're going to want to pay attention to. And all the jetting manufacturers have their own needle they design to work with their jets. One thing we also don't want to do, speaking of jet kits, is mix jet kits. We don't want to take the jet out of JD's jetting kit and work with the needle on the, the, the dyno jet jetting kit. Everybody's designed their jets, their tapers. They all look the same, but there is enough change in the needles and jet configuration from each jet kit that it's going to work correctly and best with that jet kit only. So you never want to mix jets. You never want to take a jet from this and, oh, it says it's the right number. I'm going to put it in here. All main jets are made a little bit different size. Even though they all may say a 110, somebody's 110 is going to be bigger or smaller than the next guy's 110. There's no cross-reference charts. There's no rhyme or reason. You just want to follow the jetting information from a jet kit and their jets and their information. That's going to give you the best performance. Now, when we change jets and you want to open up your carburetor, you got to take those screws off. I highly recommend get a good quality JIS screwdriver. The stock screwdriver is, or just regular Phillips head screwdriver, as a lot of you have probably experienced, just strips out those screws. A JIS is going to do it the proper way. And we've already got the float bowl kind of loose, and we're going to open it up here. And we're going to, as I fumble again, there we go. We've got the floats out of the way. So we can see inside that the fuel goes into... The fuel lever, that's where your fuel line goes into, and as I've highlighted with a little bit of purple here, it kind of comes around and it comes up to where the float valve would be. That's going to be inside there, that's what fills up the float bowl when the carb's upside down, and that's where the pilot jet and the main jet will drink its fuel from. It's going to be sitting in that float bowl kind of like that, and it's going to drink, and that's what controls. Again, when looking at, at the jetting, 
When you change the air fuel mixture screw, it picks up the fuel from the same internal veins that would feed the pilot jet. So those two kind of work together, and that's where it gets the fuel from. But when you make your jetting changes, we don't want to evaluate one stage at a time and make one change at a time. We don't want to say, oh, it's not running good at high RPMs. I'm going to make the main jet bigger. And I'm going to adjust the air fuel mixture screw, and I'll move the clip position on the needle. You're going to get more bad information that's going to get you farther out in the bushes than you were to start with. So we want to make these changes one step at a time. It will be a little tedious, but when you're done and you follow the instructions from the jet kits, the bike's going to be running perfect, going to be running optimum. The next thing we want to take a look at with jetting that kind of confuses everybody is vacuum-operated carbs. Majority of the motorcycles out there that still have carburation, they're vacuum-operated carb. The slide moves up and down without the use of the cable. The throttle cables actually only open up a butterfly valve, which creates a little more RPMs, creates the vacuum, which will open up the slide. Most of these will have, especially on a big single cylinder, most of these vacuum operated carbs at low RPMs kind of have lethargic performance. It's really not that snappy till you get it up about the first third, you get into mid range, then the carb's very responsive, especially once you've installed a good jet kit with an air fuel mixture screw, especially one of the extended ones, make it easy to adjust. Once you've done that, the carb's gonna respond a little bit better, but it's still a vacuum operated carb. It's always gonna have a little bit of weak, uh, a little bit of, a, uh, again, lethargic performance at low RPMs. You can't escape that unless you get rid of that carb and you get one of the upgraded flat slide Makuni carbs from us. So with that, we're gonna open up the top of the carb and take a look inside. We've got the spring that holds everything in place. It's a light return spring. Now we've seen some people mention, oh, you wanna take that spring and you wanna cut off a couple pieces here and there. You wanna take your slide, you wanna drill a couple holes. That will make the slide react a little bit faster. It will go up a little bit better. Obviously, the spring with less resistance in it is gonna respond a little bit quicker to the vacuum and it's gonna have less resistance, it's gonna open up that slide a little bit quicker. On the other hand, if you're coasting downhill, if you have to do a sudden shop, there's not enough tension to shut that slide rapidly. It kind of goes down a little bit weaker. It, the performance gains that it, it potentially has isn't worth the, the, the possibility of not having the sharp carb shut off as fast as possible. We don't like cutting links off the spring or drilling holes in the slide. They work fine just the way they are and, and we'd like to keep it that way. Now the needle, again the needle does the lion's share of work and the Jet kits all have needles with clip positions that allows you to richen or, or lean out the carburetor in the mid-range. Again, that's going to control mid-range performance only. So once you're riding, you do a little evaluation, you're purring along, and we'll show a little illustration where to determine your RPMs on your throttle housing to understand what changes you may have to, to get. You want to go along mid-range, just kind of cruising along. Does it hold a nice steady RPMs? Is, is, you know, you're, you're getting good performance. Is there a little bit of surge? Is there a little bit of drawback? Does, does it have a little stutter to it? That's what you want to evaluate. What we're looking for is just a nice steady RPMs, a nice easy cruise in the mid range. You can raise it up a little bit, see if it cruises again. That's perfect. That's what you're looking for. Again, you don't have to read plugs. If it's running great with you, doesn't matter what the plug says. You like the way it performs. So again, we're looking at the inside of the carbs and the choke in the air fuel mixture circuit that operates uh, that valve there. It's on a variety of these carbs. That valve there is what's gonna operate your vacuum petcock. If you've got a mechanical petcock, we just plug that up. We get a, something, a rubber plug put over it, seal it nice and tight. Some people like to just leave a little hose on there, push a bearing down in size, want to seal that off completely so it doesn't draw the vacuum from this and give you all kinds of, the RPMs won't want to idle right, nothing's want to behave right until you get that shut off again with a mechanical petcock, you wanna make that adjustment. So let's take a look at what to test. You've evaluated the, you, you've let the motorcycle warm up completely, and now you wanna go out. You wanna just take off, just ride like normal, run it up through the, the, the gears, uh, you know, as, as the streets and conditions allow, and you just wanna kinda do a nice steady roll on with the throttle. You get it in about second gear, third gear, just go a nice steady roll on. Not stab it wide open and not too cruisy. We just want a nice steady roll on up through the RPM range. Shift it to the next gear. Again, a nice steady roll up. Those two RPM ranges should mimic each other. They should pull nice and steady. Again, let's start in second gear, shift to third gear. You'll get a good evaluation of what the motorcycle carburation is doing with just those little changes, just that little evaluation right there. If it pulls nice and steady up through the RPM range, 
No problem. You've got it set. Again, when you get to wide open throttle, does it pull nice and strong? Again, a lot of these single cylinders, people say, ah, I hit high RPMs, and all of a sudden the ignition cut off. You run up against the rev limiter. You've bounced off that, and so it shut the ignition off till you back that throttle off a little bit, let it calm down and it catch again. But we hear a lot of guys, especially with jet kits, all of a sudden it doesn't run good at high RPMs. Well, actually, it's running so good, it's bounced off the rev limiter, and you got to back it off. You, you, you've, you've peaked out right there because now we're getting more power. Now we can get past the weak spots that it had before with just the standard jetting. That's the benefits of the jet kit's going to do for you. What we've done is we've added a little piece of masking tape to the throttle housing, and we've made a line across the top that matches a line we've drawn on the grip, which is a shut throttle. It's closed all the way. And then we open it up all the way open and we make another line that's wide open throttle. So we know where all the way shut is and all the way closed. Then we've also divided it in half and then we've divided it in quarters. So when you get cruising along and you're going to evaluate what my bike's doing at what RPM, don't depend upon your senses to say, oh, this feels like mid range or mid RPMs. Make sure you look over here and say, I was at half throttle when I felt this condition, or I was at three quarters throttle when I felt this condition. That's what you want to look for. Make this little indication. Most bikes don't have a tack. This is going to tell you where it is. Plus, that's easy to match up that I was at half throttle to know what's going inside the carburetor. I wasn't at wide open throttle with the slide out of the way, and you know, the, the needle's just a spectator at that point. The, the airflow mixer screw doesn't even know what's going on at that point. It's all main jet control. Whereas we're going to be back down here where we're like a quarter throttle, a little under, that's going to be the air fuel mixture screw. That's what's going to control the RPMs or get rid of the stutter and the blubbers at those RPMs is adjusting the air fuel mixture screw. And again, the lion's share of riding is always going to be in the mid range. You're always between quarter throttle and three quarter throttle for riding. That's about 90, 95% of your riding street off-road RPMs are in that range. Very little times you grab four RPMs, unless it's something situation where you got to get out of the way real quick. But all your day-to-day -day riding, again, 90, 95% of your riding is going to be in this mid-range. Making this little masking tape adjustment that you could have on your throttle housing to correspond with what your grip says is going to let you understand where the issue might be, and that helps you identify how to correct that issue and get the carburation correct again. Now we're going to go take a look at some of the other details inside the carburetor. We're taking a look here at the front, the airbox side of a carburetor. And you can see here's where the fuel inlet goes into. And I've identified in purple where it kind of travels through in the little internal tunnels. And it comes out there. That's where the float valve would sit inside your carburetor with the floats attached to it and as the floats go up it shuts off that fuel valve stopping the fuel flow but like i said before once the fuel is inside this carb body and it fills up that float bowl that's where your main jet and or your pilot jet is going to drink from that's where it's going to pull the fuel from and we want to make sure that when it's sitting in its upright position down there you set your float height adjustment so we've got plenty of fuel flow and it won't starve itself out once you start getting into bigger rpm so make sure we got the float bowl set to the correct specs which is pretty much in all service manuals and hey as always thank you for watching and don't forget to give us a big thumbs up and like us and follow us on Instagram and Facebook. And remember, your adventure begins here. Thank you.